Hey guys, I'm Songbird. Thank you for tuning in. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of the sleeping pads I've used on the trail and what has worked for me. Now I started the Appalachian Trail with a full-size closed cell phone CCF sleeping pad from Thermarest called the Z-Lite Soul. Closed cell phone sleeping pads are a great choice. Closed cell phone is budget friendly, it's durable, it's not going to pop on you in the middle of the night and leave you on the ground anyway, and it can be pretty darn warm for the weight. The Z-Lite performed excellently for me for a really long time. I was using my full-size sleeping pad as a sit pad as well, folding it up into two equal-sized halves and sitting on it for a nice, thick, comfy seat. Having the ability to sit down on something clean and soft and comfortable is really nice. Unfortunately, after months of use and abuse, my sleeping pad kind of got thinner on me and uh, kind of collapsed on me a little bit. Also, I was noticing that since I'm a side sleeper, I started to wake up kind of stiff after a few months of using it on trail. So I ended up switching to an inflatable pad for increased comfort sleeping on my side. I really have trouble falling asleep unless I'm on my left side. It's kind of a weird thing for me, but that's just how I've always been. If you sleep on your back, a closed cell phone CCF sleeping pad is going to be a great option for you. There's a couple of modifications that you can make to your closed cell phone sleeping pad that will really cut your weight down in your pack. One thing you can do is if you've ever seen a mummy sleeping bag or a coffin, how it tapers down at the foot end, you can take a pair of scissors or a knife if you're careful and trim the sleeping pad down to be more tapered to your profile. Now this tapering is going to work best for back sleepers. And the only reason I say that is because as a side sleeper, I know my knees stick out pretty far. And if I taper that pad down on the foot end, I know that my knees probably aren't going to be on the pad when I sleep on my side all curled up. Option two for cutting down your closed cell foam pad is going to be the torso length pad. The torso length pad is kind of extreme, but it really cuts down the weight in your pack. Basically what you're going to do is cut down your pad from just above your shoulders to just below your butt. This gives you the shortest, smallest, lightest foam pad possible. Normally you're going to leave a torso pad in its rectangular shape and you're not really going to taper it much, but people have been known to kind of hourglass it out. The reason a torso pad works pretty well with closed cell foam pads is that it's not very thick. This means that even if you don't have a lot of stuff, you're going to be able to throw down your backpack and your other equipment to pad out your legs and give you a little bit of warmth from underneath. In survival knowledge, it's commonly said that every inch of insulation underneath you is worth three inches of insulation above you. So having good insulation underneath your legs is pretty important. Now after using these sleeping pads for a while, I'm going to have to say that I think closed cell foam does a better job at being a smaller pad when you have a very minimal kit. The reason I say that is that if you have a very minimal kit, you're probably not going to be able to make up for the height difference with the pad by padding out with the rest of your gear. I'm going to blow this pad up and I'm going to show you what I mean. That'll get you to quit smoking. Now what I'm saying about an inflatable sleeping pad is look how thick that is. A closed cell phone pad that provides the same insulation is probably going to be around this thick. The height of this inflatable sleeping pad means that your legs are really going to suffer from what I call leg drop off. Everything below your thighs is going to hang off this sleeping pad. If you have plenty of other gear to shove inside your backpack and use it to extend your sleeping pad, a torso length inflatable pad is a great choice. But if you see the height of the pad here between my hand and a deck of cards, that's a really long way for your legs to hang off with a minimal kit. So I've ended up, as my pack has gotten lighter and with less volume, having to switch to a full length pad because my legs hang off the torso length pad and I don't have anything to lift them up with anymore. I'm going to keep using the short inflatable sleeping pad, but I'm going to use it in the colder months when I have more gear with me that I can use to pad my legs out with. So I'm going to inflate this large pad here and show you the difference in size between the two. One of the things that really sucks about sleeping pads is you have to blow them up. As you can see, with a full-size sleeping pad, I get a lot of width back, and I get a lot of extra usable space here to keep my legs warm and comfortable. As a side sleeper, it's pretty nice to have my knees up off the ground and not have to suffer with leg drop-off, where my knees just kind of float somewhere between the ground and the top of the pad all night. Again, I found that I really needed to switch to a full-length pad for the summer because the pack volume just isn't there with my current kit. There's nothing wrong with the small inflatable sleeping pad, especially if you have enough gear to pad your legs out and have a comfortable night's sleep, no matter the season. One thing about inflatable sleeping pads, especially these Neo Air X lights, is that when you're brand new, they're going to be kind of crinkly. I've had months of use with this one, 
and you see it's not really so bad. But on a brand new pad that isn't broken in, it's gonna sound like you're sleeping on a bag of potato chips. Other than blowing them up, inflatable sleeping pads are pretty darn nice. An inflatable sleeping pad is one of the things that makes sure that I get a very comfortable night's sleep out on the trail. For me, carrying the full length sleeping pad is actually gonna be lighter than carrying extra gear to pad my legs out with. Because I'd have to carry extra clothing and a bigger backpack in order to actually pad my legs out. The one thing about an inflatable sleeping pad is you kinda always worry about it in the back of your mind. Is tonight gonna be the night where I missed a pebble or a thorn and I'm gonna wake up on the cold ground in a few hours? It does really suck knowing that your pad could pop. With that said, I have a lot of confidence in the x light I've used this small inflatable pad for many months on trail and I've never had a problem with it. It's a pretty darn good idea to carry the patch kit that comes with your sleeping pad. Even if you can't fix it on trail, you're probably gonna be able to fix it in town with your patch kit. Especially if you're new to backpacking and camping and you maybe wanna try it out for a weekend or two and you're not sure if it's a long-term thing for you, then I would recommend going with a closed cell foam pad. But if you are worried about comfort sleeping on your side, it is true you are gonna be a little bit more comfortable probably on an inflatable pad. If it's your first sleeping pad, I don't recommend a torso length or a small inflatable pad. I'd say go with the full length inflatable sleeping pad just so you know that you'll be comfortable. The full length pad is going to give you a lot more warmth regardless of the season and that additional leg insulation is really going to help you get the most out of your sleep system. Another cool thing about closed cell foam pads is that you can just whip them out at any point and sit your butt down on trail wherever you want. This gives you a nice clean place to sit. You don't have to worry about inflating and popping your sleeping pad and using it on trail as a, as a rest seat. So that is one place where a closed cell foam pad has one in my experience, especially on a really long hike. It's super nice to have something to sit down on. I feel like the cats are gonna puncture one of these sleeping pads if I don't put them away. I should probably do that. I'll put them away in a second. Ah, I had a nightmare. You guys didn't like and subscribe and my channel went down into nothing. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching the video and I hope you have a good day. Don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel and check out some of the links down below. If you haven't seen it yet, look at my gear list for this summer. It's under five pounds.